what we're going to do. And we continue with former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. All right, so Paul, uh, Senator Rand Paul today says that the bill that the Speaker is talking about is locked up and no, nobody has an opportunity to read it. I, I talked to him earlier today and he said it's locked up because there are things in there like the Cadillac tax that is be, being renamed and a mandate that remains and that he and other conservatives and the House, uh, the Freedom Caucus in the House are against. What is your reaction? Well, I, I don't think we'll know till we see it, but you know, the legislative process takes a long time. Uh, even if you're fast, it takes a pretty long time. So they may have staff working on the bill right now. It may be in seclusion in effect for right now, but it's going to become public. And the minute it becomes public, it's going to be on the internet and you're going to have thousands of experts and lobbyists and others analyzing it within minutes. Uh, if there are really dumb things in the bill, they'll be obvious in the first 24 hours. Then I'll have to go through an amending process. I mean, I have great respect for Speaker Ryan. He and I uh, have both held that job, and it's a tough job. But in the end, uh, he serves his conference. And I think that uh, if there are some things in there that are unacceptable, my guess is they'll be taken out. It seems like uh, there's a communication. His challenge is. It seems like a, there's a communication. When I talk to the Freedom Caucus members or Senator Paul, I, it, they're assuming that these things are in there or they believe that they're in there. And it, it's nobody's talking to each other. Why are they? Why not let us see the bill now? Why, if it's being scored? Well, I, I think, frankly, the bill probably is not complete. I think that they're probably uh, looking at it, fixing it, uh, looking at things that don't quite fit, don't quite work. Uh, but the, the fact is, sooner or later, it's going to go to, I think, primarily the Ways and Means Committee in the House, but also potentially to Energy and Commerce, um, depending on how they have shaped the bill. Uh, Ultimately, it's going to go to the Senate. None of this stuff's going to happen overnight. Uh, and I, and I, I certainly don't believe that the Republican leadership is going to try to do what Nancy Pelosi uh, tried to do and Harry Reid tried to do with Obamacare. It would be a disaster to try to ram through something without having it out in the open, without making it amendable, without having a chance to talk it through. Uh, nobody is smart enough to fix 20 percent of the American economy, a matter of life and death for every American, in secret. So sooner or later, it's going to become public. Uh, but I also think what, Senator, what Speaker Paul Ryan said is absolutely true. Tom Price, the new uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services, a medical doctor, spent years as a member of Congress working on this very issue. I interviewed him many times. chairman of the Budget Committee. Yeah. Well, and, and so... They've, so they've got a guy at Health Human Services who understands how to work with the House Republicans. He's very acceptable to the Senate uh, Republicans. They're going to have to talk all this stuff through. And frankly, there'll be a lot of tension. Uh, I, I have no doubt that there will be amendments offered and that some of those amendments will pass. But that's the legislative process. I mean, that is how America is supposed to operate. OK, I, then you make me feel better when you say you, you said the other night you put it in a box. What do you need to get the bill passed? What do you need? I understand it's like making sausage. Right. It's complicated. It's also important, though. Right. I, I think one of the things that Americans like the most about the president, why his popularity is soaring and why people are are coalescing around his agenda is because he's keeping his promises. And I think it's so important that right. on every one of these issues, he, they don't really have a lot of time even though they have both houses of Congress, do they? There is a, a period of time. Next year, we begin an election oh. cycle again. Am I wrong? Yeah, but look, if, no, yes, you're wrong. Okay. Uh, Tell me where I'm wrong. Here's, Thanks a lot. Here's I why thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a good enough friend. I thought I'd just be straight. Yeah, I know. Look, it's fine. I was... we, passed, we, passed, we passed welfare reform in the summer of an election year. And it got vetoed twice. We passed it three times. It got signed the third time. The, 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 here's a very simple question. When people thoroughly understand this bill, do they think it's better for them? If the bill's better for them, I don't care whether it's the month before the election, it's going to be hard to stop it. Yeah. If they think the bill's worse for them, you're going to create a new Tea Party movement. So I don't, I don't have an artificial deadline. I think uh, Speaker Ryan has said, with great sincerity, 200 days. that he hopes to get everything done in 200 days. Okay, fair well, enough. That's, you know, and I've that's said to fair. you, by the I, way, I, I am not take, saying any of this you is take easy. Taxes, 
Go ahead. Right. But you take taxes, infrastructure, and Obamacare. If they can pull those three off in 200 days, they'll have done more than Reagan did in 81 and more than we did in 95. All right. Well said. That uh, You made me feel better today. Amazing for somebody who's just beating me well, down on I'm my own delighted. show. It's unbelievable. Uh, good to see you. <laughs> and up next tonight right here on Hannity. To accomplish our goals at home and abroad, we must restart the engine of the American economy. President Trump vowing to jumpstart the economy, and he's doing just that. Austin Goolsby, Lou Dobbs, they battle it out coming up next. And later, meet another American hero featured in President Bush's book, Portraits of Courage, as we continue. To accomplish our goals at home and abroad, we must restart the engine of the American economy. American companies are taxed at one of the highest rates anywhere in the world. My economic team is developing historic tax reform that will reduce the tax rate on our companies so they can compete and thrive anywhere and with anyone. All right, President Trump talking about his efforts to bolster the economy during his joint address to Congress earlier this week. Now, earlier today, the president issued a tweet regarding the recent gains in America's stock markets, writing, quote, since November the 8th, Election Day, the stock market has posted $3.2 trillion in gains. Consumer confidence is at a 15-year high. Jobs. Here with reaction is former Obama economic advisor Austin Goolsby, as well as the host of the ever successful Lou Dobbs Tonight Show on our sister network, the Fox Business Network. Um, consumer confidence is high, but I'm a big believer in the tax plan. Right. Energy independence, getting rid of Obamacare, 15% corporate rate, 10% repatriation rate. To me, factories, manufacturing centers go up by leaps and bounds. When that happens, everything that you laid out, the, there is no ceiling for what this economy can do. Uh, economic growth, we're already, uh, we, we've seen this you know, a struggling recovery from extraordinarily difficult historical uh, uh, lows uh, in this economy and uh, you know, the worst recession since uh, the Great Depression. But what we're looking at now is consumer confidence that's rising 15-year high we're watching investor confidence we don't have to go out and do a poll we've got 3.2 trillion dollars in additional market cap that's been added to our equities markets since one donald j but that trump still was elected help the people in poverty food stamps sure it does. And, and out of the late well for as the bible teaches us there is no greater act of love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Ryan laid down his life for his friends, for his country, and for our freedom. And we will never forget Ryan. To those allies who wonder what kind of a friend America will be, look no further than the heroes who wear our uniform. Our foreign policy calls for a direct, robust, and meaningful engagement with the world. It is American leadership based on vital security interests that we share with our allies all across the globe. We strongly support NATO, an alliance forged through the bonds of two world wars that dethroned fascism and the Cold War and defeated communism. But our partners must meet their financial obligations. And now, based on our very strong and frank discussions, they are beginning to do just that. In fact, I can tell you the money is pouring in. Very nice. Very nice. We expect our partners, whether in NATO, the Middle East, or in the Pacific, to take a direct and meaningful role in both strategic and military operations and pay their fair share of the cost. Have to do that. 
We will respect historic institutions, but we will respect the foreign rights of all nations, and they have to respect our rights as a nation also. Free nations are the best vehicle for expressing the will of the people, and America respects the right of all nations to chart their own path. My job is not to represent the world. My job is to represent the United States of America. But we know that America is better off when there is less conflict, not more. We must learn from the mistakes of the past. We have seen the war and the destruction that have ravaged and raged throughout the world, all across the world. The only long-term solution for these humanitarian disasters, in many cases, is to create the conditions where displaced persons can safely return home and begin the long, long process of rebuilding. America is willing to find new friends and to forge new partnerships where shared interests align. We want harmony and stability, not war and conflict. We want peace wherever peace can be found. America is friends today with former enemies. Some of our closest allies decades ago fought on the opposite side of, of these terrible, terrible wars. This history should give us all faith in the possibilities for a better world. Hopefully, the 250th year for America will see a world that is more peaceful, more just, and more free. On our 100th anniversary in 1876, Citizens from across our nation came to Philadelphia to celebrate America's centennial. At that celebration, the country's builders and artists and inventors showed off their wonderful creations. Alexander Graham Bell displayed his telephone for the first time. Remington unveiled the first typewriter. An early attempt was made at electric light. Thomas Edison showed an automatic telegraph and an electric pen. Imagine the wonders our country could know in America's 250th year. Think of the marvels we can achieve if we simply set free the dreams of our people. Cures to the illnesses that have always plagued us are not too much to hope. American footprints on distant worlds are not too big a dream. Millions lifted from welfare to work is not too much to expect. And streets where mothers are safe from fear, schools where children learn in peace, and jobs where Americans prosper and grow are not too much to ask. When we have all of this, 